At this point in the spring game, not much, but we are underway in the 2024 orange and white spring game. The Will Stone kickoff. And again, it's non contact as the play blown dead. And there's Matthew Golden. Sark couldn't stop talking about the special teams when we spoke with him, Fozzie, saying we should have a great return team this year. Golden expected to be a big part of that as Quinn Ewers get ready to take the opening snap for this offense. Ewers coming off that Big 12 championship game MVP performance. Texas's final year in the conference. Beside Quinn in the backfield for the white squad is Jaden Blue, the junior out of Houston. What a strong season. Six yards per carry for Blue. Here we go. First one dropped off to Isaiah Bond. The transfer he is wrapped up and taken down Anthony Hill. Now Sark recruited Bond heavily when he was with Alabama. He finally got him this year. As making the catch is Jonte Cooks. Win with the play action fake. That one batted and intercepted by Alfred Collins. The big man taking it to the house. What an amazing play right there. Baron, this is what you got to do. Byron Murphy, I'm sorry. This is what you have to do. Ethan Burke bats it up. Then they play off each other, and Alfred Collins is a guy that's going to step up in a big way as he makes a big splash play right there. Flashback to his freshman year when he burst on the scene with that interception in the Alamo Bowl against Colorado. And just like that, the Orange squad goes up. Well, just like that, Quinn is back on the field. I know they wanted to give him limited appearances, but maybe just a few more snaps here. After that score by Alfred Collins, C.J. Baxter in the backfield now. Went off 659 yards on the ground a season ago. And they get the carry stuffed up the middle. Constantly blocking guys left and right. Chipping when he comes out of the backfield. Really putting his body on the line during the spring. Ewer steps up. And an incompletion on second down. Another look at Ewer's. Steps up in the pocket from a year ago. As far as receptions are concerned, Ewers to his right. And that one is hauled in by Jonte Cook. A first down for the White Squad. What a phenomenal catch right there. You want to see somebody making a play against contested coverage? It doesn't get any tighter than what Malik Muhammad was able to do right there. And Jonte Cook, strong hands, finds a way to come down with it, pick up the first down for Texas O. Muhammad couldn't have played any gear expected from the sophomore defensive back. Baxter working his way to his left. Average just under five yards per carry on the season. Gets a breather after a one-yard gain. Jaden Blue back in the game. Ewers back to pass to his left. Long for Ewers in the white squad. Plenty of time. Ewers steps up. And again intended for Bond, but couldn't connect here for this game. So Charlie Ferris, the junior out of Houston, set to punt. And there we go. Fair catch. All these new faces among the receivers. Bond, Wingo, Golden as well. They give up the middle to Savion Red, who was so effective in that Red Cat package here as well. I mean, we had a chance to talk to him at length. What a charismatic guy. You can see why he's been so successful on the recruiting trail as that one hauled in again by Wingo and Kyle Flood. Again, it's Red with the carry. Just a loaded squad that only lost one starter from a season ago. Owens. That one a little bit too high for Parker Livingston. 40 acres, so third and 15 now for the freshman Trey Owens. Owens fires it over the middle, and that one hauled in on the run, and a touchdown by Thatcher Milton. Hold on, we got we got a little yellow laundry down oh, in the middle no. of the field. What an unbelievable pocket presence, though, Trey Owen showed. Illegal hands to the face. It's coming back. 
much to the ire of the fans as well. They don't like that call. Beautiful pocket right there. Obviously you can't have the hands to the face like we saw on the left side. You negate a huge play right there by the left tackle. Okay, it's close. I mean, they were hands to the face on the other side of the ball. Mark knows what the fans want. Hands to the face on the defense. See, oh, thank you. You were right. Thank you, Sark. I thought that's what I saw. Hands to the face on the other side of the ball. As the defense was working on Trevor Goolsby. Take a look at Trevor Goolsby, the offensive lineman number 74. He is the recipient of hands to the face. Left tackle right there. Yeah, you see it right there. Zena, also an incoming freshman, has a ton of potential, big time size. Got to learn to bring those hands down. But ultimately, what a great job. Ball has that entire offensive line, allowing the time on a third and 15 for Trey Owens to step up, find Thatcher Milton, put points on the board for the Orange yet again. What do you think Sark could do? going deep and that one is hauled in by DeAndre Moore for the touchdown white squad is on the board Manning to Moore what an absolute beautiful pass that was Arch Manning comes in after this white offense was not able to find traction on their first two drives here's a surprise for you right here Arch finds time play action Freezes the defense, gives Arch the opportunity to pump fake to one side, and then lo and behold, there's his guy, DeAndre Moore. We were asking who's going to step up, make plays at this receiver position. Well, DeAndre Moore has showcased what he can do just in a small sample size with that play right there. Arch Manning, 75 yards to Moore. Burt Auburn on for the extra point. And we got a 14 7 game. Big smile. Outside here. Usually you got responsibilities where he has the deep third. He has to get back. If he doesn't get back, that motion happens. They do a switch release. Bye bye. Arch Manning finds his guy, DeAndre Moore, for the 75 yard touchdown right there. Before that, he threw a 50 yard touchdown to Thatcher Milton. That was called back. And then overruled. There is the gift to Savion Red. Texas originally offered Blackshire back in 2018. Ended up passing, but has finally made his way to the Longhorns. Owens just got rid of it in time. Coach, you were just telling us that this is the most impressive spring game you've seen, and it's just the first quarter. What is it that stood out to you here so far? You know, it's just been a lot of fun. I mean, this is a great environment. Our fans have been awesome. Our players are playing loose. They're having fun, and it's been good football so far. What did you see with that officiating call there earlier? <laughs> well... We were calling it the wrong way. They called number 19. I said, I'm glad I'm back here with you guys. There's 19s on defense. So we got the call right, and the Orange got the touchdown. How different is this vantage point for you, standing behind the play, not on the sidelines, relinquishing those duties here today? I have no stress level. It's all on these coaches. I'm just enjoying the game. For Arch Manning, what was the design of that play to DeAndre Moore? It's just a double post, got a blown coverage, and he saw it and, and laid it in there for a touchdown. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Enjoy it. Sark allowing Kyle Flood and Jay Milwee a number of assistants to call plays. And that one a bit too low. Or look at that one. Ball was bad. It appeared to hit the ground before he was able to catch it. But it appears the orange is set to punt the ball. So many big plays already <laughs> that we haven't had an opportunity. Yeah to see these offenses in the red zone after that punt. Let's send it back down to field level with Morgan. Sark told us Arch getting more comfortable settling in the pocket this spring as he fires a dart over the middle and that one hauled in by Ryan Niblett. And by a dart, that is the absolute truth. How much spin he was able to put on that finds him running wide open in the middle. Shout out to Ryan Niblett getting this. Trey Weisner in the backfield behind Manning. He gets the carry. Weisner with some room. Heading to the edge. Look at Trey Weisner showing off the speed before he's finally run out of bounds. However, we may have holding. 
thighs as we get another look at this one called back. Arch is 6'4", 220, but he may be the fastest Manning since his namesake, his grandfather, <laughs> Arch Manning, who ran for more than 2,000 yards in the NFL, but Sark told him running in the red zone, but otherwise, let's get a little more comfortable in there in the pocket. I mean, some just not to my family, but to everybody, all the fans, all the all the teammates, all the coaches. Like, I, I went to something like last month, this Texas, you know, one fun thing, and you know, there were so many people there that went to Texas, and it was just a it was a good feeling just knowing that just so many people support me and how much I you know try to support this university um, with everything I do. You know, it's, it's definitely been something that I that I cherish and that I will never take for granted. New head coach and new quarterback in Atlanta. How are the Falcons looking? Oh man, we 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 were, and we're just trying to you know work hard so we can be the best that we can in the season. As far as what you've seen from these backs here with Jaden Boone, CJ Baxter, what stood out? What's impressing you about those two? Yeah, I mean they're two different backs. Um, you know, with Jaden, with Jaden, you know he, he he has the speed, he has the explosion. Um, you know the quicks, make people miss. Um, and then you know with, with, with CJ, you know he's more you know power, but with speed, with with, with wiggle. Um, but they complement each other, you know, really well. You know, just like just like me and Roshan did, you know, when we were here. So I'm excited to see what they do. Um, you know, I can't wait to you know really get to talk to them and sit down with them. And, and what game do you have circled on your calendar? Yeah, I mean, uh, but uh, probably Georgia, um, just because I'm, I'm in Atlanta. So I'm in Dijon here, and you may have seen on your split screen, CJ Baxter just truck. A defender there. Nobody told him it's a spring game. He ran over. <laughs> I believe it was Michael, Michael Taff. Taff. Oh boy. Uh, that was before he ran through three tackles prior to that. Right. Giving him a rest after that. Replaced by Jaden Blue. Arch decides to step up and run on third down. Yeah, here's what's critical about this play, though. It's third and three, right? Texas needs to find a way to get a first down. His options are not there. Instead of taking a sack or throwing the ball away, he tucks it and is able to pick up a first down. That moves them right inside the 30-yard line. Running you can do as a quarterback, third downs like we saw there, and in the red zone, Texas with a handoff now to Trey Wisner. He's in. Second and 10 for Manning. Fires it over the middle, that one hauled in, and a touchdown by Jaden Blue. Arch with two touchdowns on the day. Again, what a perfect opportunity to showcase his poise in the pocket. You see him steadily going through his reads and his progression. He finds the guy that he's looking for, puts the ball right on him in a bullet format, and Jaden Blue is able to do the rest. That's what you want to see from a young freshman quarterback be able to make plays like that. Remember, it's the third and three prior to this drive. He was able to keep the drive alive by picking up the first down with arm. All right, Fozzie, not a bad performance from Arch so far. Five for five, two touchdown passes. AM Central in Ann Arbor on September 7th. So here we go, less than seven to play in the first half. Oh, got a little trickery here. That one overthrown by Ryan Wingo. His new player to throw the ball and Ryan Wingo absolutely let that ball fly. It was a little too far for fellow freshman receiver parking Livingstone, but it was good form. 10 for Trey Owens. Blitz is coming, and that one lone dead. Quinn added a little bit of weight this offseason. Well, third down for Trey Owens and drops in a perfect pass to Thatcher Milton. Right there. Thatcher Milton, first off, is having a spring game of his life. This guy's been on the receiving end of a touchdown, a couple first downs, big play right there. There was a moment ago, his deep ball really got going over the second half of last year. Over the last seven games of last season, he was a starter. Trey Owens. Showing some nice accuracy on this drive. Sends it out wide to Jarrett Gibson. Christian Clark in the backfield. And the four-star running back gets the carry and the first down. But up on Thursday. First and ten. That one batted in the air. Responds, right? Little over two minutes. This is a two-minute drill situation. Situational football is what wins and loses games. Austin Jordan does a great job. Trey Owens had to turn into a defensive back and get in the way of Jordan to prevent him from catching that off the deflection. So, through a 50-yard touchdown pass to Milton. 
in the opening quarter. Firing it up to his left and drops a dime into the hands of Ryan Wingo. Touchdown, Orange Squad. Again, what a beautiful throw by Trey Owens. He has been on the money. 56 yards on that pass to Ryan Wingo. Early enrollee to early enrollee on early enrollee as Kobe Black was the recipient that was not able to stay with Ryan Wingo. What a beautiful pass. That's what you want to see by this young offense be able to put up points in an explosive way. Hit him in stride. Trey Owens, Sartor said he can make all the throws, put up unreal high school numbers, more than 6,000 passing yards. Look at this setup right there. The offense gives them space to be able to make that pass. And remember, this is two-minute offense. And Manning putting on a show here in half number one. Arch just with a bullet in there, finding DeAndre Moore. What he can do whenever he has the ball in his hands. He's six for six, seven for seven. Jaden Blue with the catch. Eight for eight, Arch Manning. This time hooking up with Matthew Golden, the junior transfer out of Houston. Offense. Less than a minute to go in the half. Another completion for Manning, this time to Gunner Helm. Manning 10 for 10. They give it to Blue up the middle, and he has the first down as Texas. Manning, pressure in his face, and that was his first incompletion of the contest. 12 to play in the half. In motion is Jonte Cook, then it's Helm the other way. Play clock at five. Manning over the middle, in and out of the hands of Isaiah Bond. That's a beautiful pass right there. That's one that you want to be able to see if Bond can come down with that. Arch Manning steps strong in the pocket again. May have been a tad high, but that's something that these, you're on scholarship. That's something that you want to see brought in every single time. We saw drops plague this offense two seasons ago. Not as much last in 10. There you go, Get your hands up. Manning out in the flat to Baxter and steps out of bounds. And it is good. So there you go. We've hit zeros on the clock. Coach, an exciting first half. What do you like first off from Trey Owens? Well, I thought Trey, you know, as a young player, he, when he's got time and he knows where he's going, he's making really good throws. He's been doing that all spring. Yesterday, it was officially approved by the NCAA with the coach to player comms. How has that been working out for you guys? How have you been utilizing it today? Well, it's been really good. Our quarterbacks are on it right now. We only have three devices, so all three quarterbacks have been on it. When we come back in fall camp, the deep defenders will get involved with it as well. Speaking of defense, what adjustments maybe do you want to see them make a little bit here in the second half? Well, they're playing really good against the run. we got to try to minimize some of these explosive pass, pass plays. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Win viewers, whoever is in at quarterback. Now, that communication shuts off Fozzie at the 15-second mark on the play clock. But up until then, makes things so much easier. Uh, however, as the head coach pointed out, the defensive coaches were not too happy. That will have a green dot on their helmet. Signifying they're the recipient of that communication. I want to see from Colton Vasek, the Westlake product, being able to beat that tackle on the inside move and then force a TFL something. Owens with the fake under pressure, and they blow the play dead. Again, you go. Colton Vasek. Yes, he is he's everywhere. making his living in the backfield right now, flying across high effort plays. High energy, has really good elusive hips right there. He reads the block on the boot, finds a way to get around it, and then in real play, that would have been a sack. He's already converted on a couple of third and longs, has Trey Owens. It's one third and 19 of those teams involved. Here is Manning. Another completion. This time it's Isaiah Bond hanging on to that one, Arch Manning. Of course, had that huge fourth and 31 grab in the Iron Bowl. Is that one hauled in by Isaiah Bond? 
When he was with the Tide again, had that clutch grab. Coming up with a few nice catches here. Yeah, this is a clutch grab right there. Second and four. Find a RPO opportunity. Gavin Holmes defense draped all over his back. He finds a way to come down with the contested catches, and that is what you want to see from a guy that's transferred in with high expectations in his offense. Get on to that ball here in the third quarter. Fake to Baxter. Manning has all day and finds a wide open Jonte Cook. Take it out of bounds inside the five. That puts Arch in rhythm. Now three straight completions in the red zone right inside the five-yard line. Here we go. We want to see how the Texas red zone did offensively. Baxter staying on his feet, sticking with it, and brought down at the one. That was a strong run there by C.J. Baxter. What you would love to see from the defense is them finding a way to add some more help. Goal from the one. Again, it's Baxter up the middle, pushing the pile, and he is in for the touchdown. The day for either squad. And the extra point up and good, C.J. Baxter punching it in from one yard out. Alabama, Roger Clemens showed up on the sidelines, and Sark said, listen, I've always been a huge fan, really admired how intimidating Clemens was up all day. That's what the defense has been doing into the end zone. They've been very stingy, and that's been Alex January early and Roley being able to make a good move on that offensive lineman in of what Sweat and Murphy are leaving behind. And freshman out of Duncanville. Third and long. So Owens got a first down on a third and 22. And a third and 19. Has to hurry that one out. Absolutely. New quarterback in the game, Joe Tatum. Five for Tatum. Out to his right. Won't be enough for a first down. First Fourth and one down. Oh, they were trying to call the offsides. <laughs> I think Joe Tatum got him. We'll see what the referees say here. But fourth and one in this type of situation, the defenders must know the offense is going to try to get you on a double count because it's, it's, it doesn't hurt them. Offside on the defense, number 84. Five-yard penalty results in a first down. From the head coach perspective, though, that's not what you want to see. You want to see discipline on the defensive side of the ball. They call it earmuffs is what coach yells out on the defensive side. Earmuffs, earmuffs. Don't worry about the hard count, right? Bla Vernon Broughton not playing. Baron Sorrell not playing. And Jade Barron not suiting up in this one. Murphy moving on. How about the linebacking core? Anthony Hill moving to the middle. Woo! What? The moves up the middle by Kai Woods, the junior. Obviously, Jalen Ford has been holding down that move. What a move right there by Kai Woods. I can't bypass that. Jelani McDonald, one-on-one -on -one in the hole. That defense and really take over in the same way that Jalen Ford was able to solidify himself as a great Texas linebacker. Kai Woods bottled up. The coaches also said Leon de la Fowle had a great sprint. Kandari Andrew Makubo, one of the new faces. And when we talked to David Benda yesterday, says Tatum out to his left of that one off the fingertips of Juan Davis secondary absolutely especially whenever Texas had secondary depth a season ago he's a guy that helped shore up that death immediately and provide some big time opportunity with big time playmaking ability says moving forward in the offenses had their hands full as Savea almost had an opportunity to block that extra point. How are they preparing of it coming into something like this? Oh, uh, you know, for them, I mean, transitioning into the SEC, obviously there's a lot more little pressure, as people would say. But, you know, playing football, I mean, it's what everyone's done their whole life. So it's kind of. By Kobe Black moments ago, Fozzie. Yeah, this is what we talked about right before break was seeing the defense make a play. And there you have it right there. Big time recruit Kobe Black now being able to showcase his talents. Great feeling. I'm blessed to be here. Um, Texas has helped me tremendously get to where I'm at. I, I, I'm so thankful for this university and for the, the teammates I've had, coaches I've had the past three years. Uh, I, I'm just so thankful, thankful for everybody. So that leads to this possession. Arch Manning back in the gun. 
Amari Nyblak. You talk about a kid who can do everything in high school at Connolly and Waco. As that one dumped off in the flat to Nyblak by Arch. And then hammered out of bounds. The strong hit was Jelani McDonald. You talk about Kobe Black as we'll get another look at this one. Kobe Black played wide receiver, running back, safety, cornerback. Kobe Black can do it all. You I back on returns, special teams? Only, only whenever the necessary. <laughs> <laughs> another flag here. Illegal snap on the offense, number 76, five-yard penalty. It is first down. The officials want to get a little air time. We hadn't called on them too much in the first <laughs> half. Yeah, this drive is not what you want to see from the offensive perspective. You should be able to get in there on the two-yard run. I think overall the running backs have done a great job. Arch is back out here for quarter number four. To his left and a wide-open receiver. Led Matthew Golden a little bit too far. Terrence Brooks could have actually put a shot on Matthew Golden there. Understanding it's the spring game. No need to take that <laughs> shot. We need you for the season. That's great play by both of those guys. Because he knew Brooks was right there. Arch, by the way, now 16 of 19 on the day. Battle saying who's going to be Texas's starter for the upcoming season. It's been a long time since there wasn't that debate as the play was blown dead in and out of the hands of Golden. He hated football at first. He used to cry going to practices. And now he makes opposing quarterbacks cry as that one doinks off the post. Here is Cole Lord. Kicked off earlier. And Kobe Black, Jordan Washington with the grab. Freshman out of Houston. Send it back. We got out there in the first first half, but we got to pick it up a little bit. But I trust my guys. I know we, we're capable of doing a lot, but just stay tuned and watch to the very end. That's what I was <laughs> focusing on. You had told us yesterday in the meetings, Andrew McCuba was one guy you really were excited to see and had your eye on. How did he impress you here today? Man, cool. Like I told him earlier, he had a lot. Casting veteran, he looked right into the camera during most of his answers. <laughs> I mean, he's an impressive guy. We all sat around the teammates. And he said that's something he's really working on. I said, listen, as a broadcaster, too, that's going to help you because he wants to get into sports casting after his playing days are over. But I thought that was a very interesting and astute point. Foot down, assert yourself, communicate to the defense, and make things happen. He said he stuck around for a sixth season because he wanted to finish the... Best answer, without hesitation, he said, you, I'm most excited to see you, David Benda. And that was because everyone from Coach Sark to offensive coordinator Kyle Flood to... David Benda, great influence on his teammates. Back for year number six. Third and long, meanwhile, with just over Illegal nine snap. minutes to go in the contest. On the offense, number 51, five-yard penalty. It is third down. Penalty on the O-line, an offensive line that, according to Kyle Flood, has seven potential starters, best offensive line in the country. Yeah, and they got a taste of what it looks like as they played against Washington, who won it last season, and they play against Michigan this upcoming year. Who for Cole Lord. Over the middle, hauled in and hanging on. Great catch by Jordan Washington. What an absolutely amazing play. Jordan Washington in Rowley early this spring, coming in from the Houston area, goes all the way, climbs that ladder, expecting the impact, comes down with the ball. That's what you want to see from the tight end position, especially whenever we're talking about somebody replacing Jatavian Sanders. Make plays like that, and your number will get called. Absolutely. Savion Red in the backfield. Gets the handoff. Texas now inside the red zone. Second and eight for the Orange squad. Colin Page replacing Savion Red. It may have been deflected. Martin there. Third and eight for Lord. Somehow through traffic, threads the needle product absolute dime right there by Cole Lord defense draped all on him again Jordan Johnson Rubel is right there Zay see how it ends and once again in the backfield <laughs> Colton Vosick a guy that's been injured in the past like you mentioned 
It helps if you block them. If nobody blocks you, you better make the play. And off up the middle, Jarrett Gibson. Third and goal. Lord and tackled immediately after making the grab is Reese release right now. Lord fires it into the back of the end zone, and that one is caught by Reese Bochamp. What an absolute play. Cole Lord is playing like he's on fire right now. He saw his buddies Arch Manning and Trey Owens getting their shine in. Well, Cole Lord said, it is my turn to do the same. He takes his time to go through the progression, threads the needle through two sets of defenders, find Reese Bochamp in the back of the end zone. What an astounding play by those two guys hooking up right there at the back of the end zone. On this drive with pinpoint accuracy, including that last one as the extra point up and good by Wilson. Plenty of time in the pocket as Arch back out there. Arch playing to the last few minutes of this contest. Great performance from Manning today. Going deep, has a receiver open. It's Isaiah Bond off to the races. Touchdown, Bond. Arch Manning is fired up right now. That's the type of performance that you want to see from a guy that's looking to find his way onto the field in some form or fashion. Isaiah Bond showcased the speed, had the early drop, but guess what? He comes back, makes a big play, had the contested catch earlier. Now he burns the defense to put the white team back on top. So much fireworks happening in this Texas spring game. That is Arch Manning's second 75-yard touchdown pass of the day. His overall. What can you want? <laughs> Cole Lord's probably asking the same thing that you talked about with Graham Gillespie. I just had to get two fourth down conversions to take the lead, and then the defense surrenders a touchdown in two plays. What more needs to be done? What a beautiful throw right there. Right over the shoulder, Isaiah Bond doesn't even have to break shot. He shows that 10-5 speed that he ran in high school, which made him such a high, high priority in the transfer portal. Those are the plays that you want to see that Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell and Jordan Whittington were able to put on display for this Texas offense last year. Isaiah Bond seems poised to be able to fill those roles. Now for our Players Spotlight brought to you by Texas One Fund. Arch Manning, 17 of 20, 339 through the air. Three touchdowns, as we said, two of 75 yards. Okay, we got a little back and forth here at the final moments of this 2024 spring contest. We'll see how the orange squad answers. Oh, in and out of the hand. Another opportunity for Owens. It's one of his few mistakes. Owens finding Savion Red, who's still on his feet and finally brought down as he crosses midfield. Now you see Savion Red setting up the outside move, puts Ty Anthony Smith in a little roll of hesitation and then finds a way to make a big play right there. Owens, as they try to answer the white score here with two and a half minutes to go in the contest, Will Randall with the grab. Former teammate of Arch Manning at Isidore New. Lead this last possession, see what they have in store. Owens, and in the backfield, nearly picked off. Austin Jordan was right there when the ball arrived, and the white squad nearly came up with a pick again. That was an awesome job right there by the defense being able to disrupt that pass. It looks like we have a Longhorn down on the ground as the defender looked to go dive in towards the ball. Might have had his foot stuck in the grass, uh, but that's what you want to see from the defense. You see a short, quick read, and your read tells you to go. That defender did not hesitate, was able to break up the pass, almost resulted in a turnover for the white team to be able to get the ball. Well, every coach will tell you across the nation their number one goal in the spring game is get out of it without any injuries, mm -hmm. unscathed. 
Jordan Washington here in the waning moments of this one. He had a productive spring game up to this point as Sark looks on. Other than that, we saw a few players limping but recovered fine and Washington will hop off under his own power with less than two to play. That's always a good sign to be as well, making big time plays. Owens to Christian Clark. It appears that Sark, the Orange trying for a final score here in the two minute drill. That one hauled in and brought down Aaron Butler, the freshman out of California, number four at. What's the call here? We shall find out Saban, Sabian Red out of the backfield. Owens finds him, cuts back towards the inside, and finally wrestled down. I wouldn't suggest it. Coach may still have to talk to him, but he was able to gain extra yardage and pick up the first down, which stops. First and goal. And there is the give to Red. Running hard here in the final moments of this contest. Brought down with forward progress. Give to Jarrett Gibson, and the flags fly. Yeah, there was a face mask by the defender. A triple negative on the defensive side of the Personal ball. If you're on the orange team. Face mask, defense number 19. Half the distance to the goal. It is first down. Nineteen just grabbing right there. Grabbed a little too much of the face mask. Jarrett Gibson finds a way to create. He holds up here in the final 36 seconds. Owens, and that one caught for the score by Ryan Wingo and waves to the fans. What an unbelievable adjustment by Ryan Wingo there, too. Trey Owens just his guy. They get pressure here because obviously the defense wants to force the offense back, put them in a worse position, take a sack, also have to call a timeout. What Trey Owens said, we have the answer to that. Ryan Wingo, where are you at? Let me find you in the back of the end zone. Ryan Wingo makes that adjustment, shows why he was one of the top receivers in the country. This is one of the most entertaining spring games we have seen around here in a long time. Will Stone. And the Orange squad answers up by one with 31 seconds to go. What an unbelievable move right there. Catches the defense on that switch route, not communicating fast enough. Frees him up to be able to adjust to the ball and then locate it in with the concentration. Touchdown, Orange team ties the game, and then Will Stone gives them the one-point time true freshman who's looking to get on the field in some way. Final 31 seconds. Pump fake. Arch fires it out wide. Do needing just a field goal in order to take the lead. Manning over the middle with the grab is Jonte Cook. First down from the 39. 15 seconds to go. Manning under pressure. And had to throw it away. Colin Simmons was right in front of him. It's too much time. My black in motion. Manning to his left. Down the sidelines. And too far for Cook. Here's a snap. Manning to his left. Nye block. Heads out of bounds. Right at the 50. With one on the <laughs> clock. Here Three receivers to the near side. Arch trying to buy some time for his wideouts to get downfield. Heaves it up. And that one came up short anyways and picked off to end the contest. Jelani McDonald with the game-ending interception of Manning as the Orange squad takes it 35-34. What an unbelievable showcase of ability and talent. This was the most competitive spring game that I have seen this Texas team play in a long time. 
Beautiful showing by Steve Sarkeesian. Probably saw what he wanted to see. But ultimately, these two quarterbacks, they stole the show, starting with Arch Manning and Trey Owen. Yeah, that was the story. Quinn Ewers obviously coming off the huge season, but he only played a few series.